Can I have that back? I need to cut that out. No, you're just gonna... Okay. Welcome, I do sewing and DIY related content, and today I'm going to be sewing a swimsuit. This is the first swimsuit I've ever made before. I've seen so many people do it this summer that I really wanted to try it out. So everything I do here is all going to be self-drafted. I have this material, I've actually had it for a really long time. I think it's super fun and colorful. And I'm gonna be using this as the base for my swimsuit. I also have just a little bit of lining, so that'll be for the top, and then I do have another thing that I can use for the bottom. But we're just gonna to try to get started. As you can see, I'm super pale, so I will not be wearing this. My dress form will be wearing this the whole time. As when I wear a swimsuit, I wear like a swim shirt to try to cover my skin. But I'm really excited to try to get this made, get it started, see how hard it is. So the first step is I did get my draping tape and just draped out how I wanted the coverage of this to be. When I do wear swimsuits, I like them to be a little more coverage than I feel like most things are these days. So I wanted it to be a little bit bigger on top as well as make sure it was full coverage on the bottom. Next, I got some mock-up fabric that had that same stretch and drape as swimwear does and just cut that out so that I could figure out you know like what the pattern piece shape would look like I saw that I needed to add a dart in the bottom I know that some people also turn this into two separate pieces but I just went with the dart format instead and then I got that dart to lay super nicely and this is what everything looked like so now that I had this one pattern piece it was then time to transfer this onto my actual fabric and that was where I used the super colorful fabric that I th still think is really fun I'm excited to see what it looks like as a swimsuit and once I did this I then had to cut out the exact same pieces for that lining. Now I didn't have too too much so this was really kind of stretching it to sort of try to make it work and I think for this purposes it did since in a way I'm viewing this while I want it to work and be a swimsuit it's more of also like a wearable mock-up so I can see you know like how I can learn from my mistakes how I can make it better all without actually using a pattern and just trying to follow different people's advice online. Next, it was then time to sew the darts. So I pinned up the darts for all four pieces, both the outside pieces of the swimsuit top as well as the lining. Then I did cut out two very, very long, thin rectangles. This is gonna be for the strap at the top of the swimsuit as well as like bias tape to use as like a finisher on the bottom portion of like the bikini top. So for the one rectangle though, what I did do is fold it in half. I'm going to pin this all the way up and I'm just gonna take a super long seam and then we'll be turning that right side out to make the strap. So for all of this, be sure if you're making it as well, you're using a zigzag stitch. For the darts, I used the zigzag stitch to kind of look like a line, but I think you also could have gotten away with your normal zigzag stitch. Basically, we just want to make sure that this has lots of stretch since we are going to be putting this on. It's very fitted to our body. We don't want to use a straight seam and then it, the seam comes unpopped. Then I did the exact same thing where I used the zigzag stitch for my strap. So I now turning this right side out, I'm using my safety pin trick, which I feel like it's just the easiest way to turn straps or turn anything anymore. So I just did this. It, it took a little bit of time just because it was such a long strap, but nothing too hard. And once I had it all turned right side out, it was then time to start piecing everything together. So as you can see here, I have the right side of the out, outerwear of my bikini top, and I am pinning on the strap so that the long portion of the strap is facing down as you can see it. And then I'm adding the lining over top of that. And I'm just pinning all of this up. And then I'm just gonna be taking a seam for both of those sides. And then I'm repeating this for the second side. This is going to allow us when we turn this right side out, our strap is then going to appear and we'll have the swimsuit looking nice and neat and we won't see any raw edges on those two sides. Now again, all of this was sewn using that zigzag stitch so it had stretch. So this is what it looks like so far. You can see that it turned out pretty well and I really do like the colors. I think it's really fun. It was turning out better than I thought it was going to. So now it was just time for me to figure out, you know, like where I wanted the two pieces to come together at. So once I figured that, I then added my bias tape and I put that in the middle so that I would know where to start sewing. And then I did this all the way around for that bottom portion, just pinning it so that the right sides are together and I could just take that long seam. And this is just the first step in finishing off the bottom portion of the swimsuit. As you can see, we're going to be folding this all around on itself. So I'm just gonna cut off all this extra fabric and then I'm just gonna fold this over so that we get a really nice and neat and clean edge. So we just want this to lay as flat as possible. So you can see here, this is what I'm talking about where I folded over the bias tape so that now it has a really clean edge on both the front and the back. We cannot see any of those raw edges and everything comes together really, really nicely. Now for the rest of the straps, I'm just folding this over as well on either side. That way it too doesn't have any raw edges and it comes together really cleanly. And then we'll finish off the ends in a different way when we get 
to doing both the top strap as well as that bottom strap. So now I'm just going to take a very nice and long, long zigzag stitch to secure the bias tape to the rest of my bathing suit. And then I did go through and I did a zigzag stitch to top stitch the um, cups for the swimsuit. And I would have recommended not doing this at this step as because I didn't use a walking foot, my fabric ended up kind of getting a little bulky looking and I think it would have been a lot better to do it at a different point. But here's what my swimsuit looks like. So what I'm doing on the back to finish off the edges since this fabric doesn't fray, I'm just tying them in a knot and I will find out you know, one day if this worked or not. But for me, just tying them into a knot like this was a very simple way to go about it and allowed me to have all four of those edges finished off without having to really worry about working with the fabric anymore. Now here is the cup of my swimsuit as I was talking about. It, it's kind of bulking in a little places. It's not laying the smoothest. So what I did was add some elastic so that it made it be, lay a little tighter against the body and that when you do wear it, it, it sits really nicely. I think I should have done this before I did all the top stitching though. So you can see here that it's still like, it doesn't lay perfectly flat, but I'm okay with how it's laying. And I think for a first attempt that this was actually went really, really well. So I added elastic for both of the inside portions. I did not do them on the outside portions of the, the little triangles. I didn't think it needed it. And I did try this on. It fits me and it did not need elastic for, it wasn't gapping on the outsides. This is what the back looks like though. So now it's time to figure out the bottoms. Obviously I have a lot of fabric that you can see and I'm not going to be using this actually for it, but it was time to then start working on the mock-up for the bottom. Now, very similar to the top portion of my fabric, I just had this mock-up fabric that had the same stretch and drape, and I did this for both the bikini front as well as the back for the bottom. The cat really seemed to enjoy these pieces of fabric, and I'm not sure why, so it was very difficult to cut out, but she just wanted to be there the entire time. When she finally did find a napping spot, though, I was able to cut out both the front and the back of my bikini bottom. I cut this on a fold so that there wasn't any front seams or back seams. And then the hard part about this is that the dress form, that like gap between the thighs, is very, very tiny compared to a human body, so it just isn't laying exactly right. You can see she is still here. She still wants to just lay on the fabric, but once she finally did move again, I was then able to cut out the back. So at the moment, you can see it's not looking the cleanest just because of the way that I had done the mock-up. So I am going to trim this up a little bit before sewing these two pieces together for the front and back. And so I pinned everything together to see, you know, like I really wanted the stripes to match if I could get them to match. So this took a little bit of careful planning. And then I did pin also up the bottom portion so that this would be kind of like one completed mock-up version of a bikini bottom. And then I just needed to trim off some of this extra fabric on either sides as it was a little bit long. And when I did that, I then took my zigzag seam for those three edges, the two on the side and then the one on the bottom, everything stretching really nicely. For this, I did switch it to a full zigzag stitch as I just wanted to make sure it had the most stretch possible. And then I just did a little trimming to make sure that everything was laying nice and smooth and that it looked nice and neat. At this point, things were coming together really well. It was looking like how it should look. And so what it was time to do now was to work on trimming a little bit up the front as well. Since when I, I did try these on and there was just a little extra fabric at the front that didn't need to be there. So I got rid of that so that when I put this and make the lining for it, I know that it will be the correct size and that everything should hopefully lay nicer. So this is what the bottom looks like so far. I think for a first attempt, it's actually pretty good. If there's definitely spots that could have been improved, there are some bulking areas, but overall, not, nothing too, too crazy. And I decided I wanted to do something a little fun with it. So I wanted to add some ruffles. I've seen people do this technique where you draw out like a big circle and then you cut that out and then you get this like really fun flouncing material. So I just decided to lay this out in a couple different ways. Like if I did one large ruffle across the entire swimsuit bottom, or if I wanted to have it where like just the entire back was covered in ruffles. So this is what it looks like if it's just like one ruffle all the way around. I think it looks really cute. And then I went to Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So be sure to follow me to ask if you liked option one or if you like this option two where they're all kind of on the back. Option one was the winner. So I decided to try a new technique, which was a three threaded rolled hem. I've never done this before. So I knew I needed only one needle on top. I looked it up and I thought this would be the perfect way to try since this is a wearable mock-up. What better way than try a new technique on something that, you know, I already know may not turn out the best. 
it was actually really easy to set the machine up for this. The only thing that I was struggling with was when I used a serger, I'm used to being able to cut off like that extra fabric and for this hem, you, you can't. So whatever size you have it be is the size that that fabric is going to be at. It came out really nicely though. And when I started to pin it up, I noticed that it was a little uneven in spots. So that would be my one thing that when I do this again is I need to make sure that the fabric is all the same width as it's very noticeable and you're not gonna be able to clean it up when you are doing the serger like you normally would be able to. Next, I then just sewed these two pieces together so I would have one nice long kind of like ring for this ruffle, pinned that ruffle onto the swimsuit bottom so that I would know how it lays and fits. And then I did kind of baste it on using a zigzag stitch just to make sure that it stays in place and I didn't have to worry about it moving while I was doing it. Then it was finally just time to basically recreate the exact same outerwear just using the lining material which was this red fabric that I had. This was all I had on hand. I definitely would have rather used that white material though if I could have. Then I just sewed up the two sides as well as the bottom portion for this and then put my lining in right sides together into my bathing suit bottoms. Now I did mess up here as I decided to pin up both legs as I thought that then I would just take a seam then flip this right side out and as you may be able to guess that does not work you end up getting i got stuck and the fabrics were not turning right side out so once i did this i did have to take out one of the leg holes so that i was able to turn this correctly right side out and that, that took some time and i realized that was a mistake on my part and there's probably a much much better way to do a bathing suit bottom but taking out the one leg hole and then having that one be nice and neat was an option that i was successful in doing and when I make another bathing suit, I will just be sure not to do that again. So now it was time I added some elastic to the inside of both leg holes so that they would lay nice and flat and really secure against the body. So I didn't have to worry about anything showing to make sure that when you're wearing this, it feels like everything is nice and covered. And then I repeat this for the second leg hole, just folding the fabric in on itself. So here's what it looks like. I think it actually is turning out really, really nicely. You can see that I did the zigzag stitch for the elastic for both leg holes and it's turning out nice. So now it is just time to finish up the top portion. So that waistband of our bathing suit bottom, bringing the lining together, the outside together, and then we already had the ruffle sort of basted on. And I do have some extra fabric left, so I'm going to do this as a bias tape situation again, where I have this all pinned up onto my dress form and I know how much I need. And then I'm just gonna be kind of folding this over to give it a really nice and clean look. So this is what it looks like so far when I had it basted or you know sewn the first time onto both my lining as well as the outside fabric. And then I pinned all of this up, so very similar to what I did before. And I'm just going to take a seam all the way around. Now I am adding elastic to the inside of this, slightly stretching the elastic as I go so that you know it's nice and taut and that everything is lining really nicely up with it. And using my zigzag stitch again, just to give it a really nice and secure feel. So this is what my swimsuit looks like. For my first attempt, I'm actually really happy with it. I definitely know that I should have used a walking foot for a lot of this. I probably should have, you know, worked a little bit more with the tensions to make sure that everything's laying nice and smooth. I'm really excited though. I think that this really wasn't too hard of a project. I think that when some people say that they're a good beginner project, that that could be accurate. I would just be very cautious about what fabrics you're using, maybe get a pattern in case you aren't as familiar with drafting, but I had a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what you wanna see next.